Hey everyone, welcome to Outer Banks Health, the official podcast series of the Outer Banks Hospital and Medical Group. Each month we feature guests to discuss not only health-related topics, but community topics as well. We are your host, Denise Schnabel. And I'm Wendy Kelly. As we move into the busy season here on the Outer Banks, we want to remind residents and alert visitors about our unique road system and how it impacts bicycle and pedestrian safety, especially along Croatan Highway. Today, one of our community's finest is in the studio. He's an Army veteran, a former deputy with the Dare County Sheriff's Department, and has spent the past five years serving in the Nags Head Police Department. He's an expert about safety on our roadways. Welcome to Detective Christian Aguirre. Hi, hi, Christian. Hi, hi. How are you? Yeah, doing well. Thank Good. you for having me. Thank you so much for coming on this really fabulous. Really appreciate it. Thank you. We're having a nor'easter as we are recording yeah. this podcast, and it's quite nasty outside. So before we begin about the topic, tell us about your background. How did you end up on the Outer Banks? Just to sum up, I was a tourist. That's how I ended <laughs> up here. But I was born in Texas and raised in Germany. Oh, wow. And uh, my father was in the military, and after I... Went to high school in Pennsylvania. I ended up enlisting in the U.S. Army. After I got out of the Army, I went back to Pennsylvania and became a deputy sheriff. And one summer back in 2007, ended up down here in Nags Head on the beach, talked to some local law enforcement guys that told me the sheriff was hiring and ended <laughs> up getting a job here in 2007. So I've been here since. Excellent. So you got that job, and then tell us about your policing career down here. <laughs> yes, I, yes, I spent from 2007 to 2017 with Dare County Sheriff's Office. And from there, I worked uh, patrol in all three districts, Hatteras, Collington, and over in uh, oh, wow. Manio and Wanchis in East Lake. So I worked a lot of traffic, a lot of patrol-related calls there. And then in 2017, moving to Nags Head, Stayed on patrol, working collisions here on the beach, and the opportunity to become a detective came up in December, so I've been doing criminal investigations since then, but still get out on the road every so often when I can. Well, congratulations. That's Thank amazing. You. Promotion. Yeah, that's excellent. So with all your experience and all your in these different states and in different jurisdictions here, do you think that we are unique, kind of? What makes the Outer Banks unique for pedestrians and cyclists? Yeah, so we're a tourist area. We have tourists that come from all over, a lot of visitors. It's an area that's conducive for pedestrian traffic as well as bicycle traffic. Everything's within walking distance. You have attractions, the little mini golf. You have shops <laughs> and uh, restaurants, the gift shops that you can get to walking or on a bike. And what do we have right across the beach road is the beach. So tourists that drive several hours, sometimes up to a whole day or a couple of days just to get here. Once they get here, the last thing they want to do is drive. Yeah. So they usually end up walking or bicycling. We also have the tourist, the J1. International the international students, students mm -hmm. yeah. And when they come, they don't have driver's license. So they yeah. usually end up using their bicycles that are sometimes given to them by the mm -hmm. places where they work, or they end up walking. So that's what the Outer Banks are really conducive for pedestrian and bicycle traffic. Right. Have you discovered through your time as a police officer that there is anything unique about the roads here or the bypass, as we like to call it, for pedestrians and cyclists? Yes, very few pedestrians and bicyclists follow the laws that already are <laughs> established for them. Many times we're dispatched to crashes that involve pedestrians or bicyclists, and these are terrible crashes that affect everyone from the victim that's struck by another mm -hmm. vehicle, the victim and their whole families, to the person that's driving a car that ends up hitting a pedestrian. It affects them, mm -hmm. especially if their children are in the car. And it also affects the law enforcement and first responders that show up to the scenes. I wanted to mention that according to the Outer Banks Bicycle and Pedestrian Safety Collision in 2016, that 85% of bicycle and pedestrian crashes were crossing crashes. Right, and we would say crossing crashes that involve bicyclists or pedestrians that were crossing 158 or any side street. So that's important to know because crosswalks are huge to prevent being struck in the middle of the road or the bypass. Yeah, you see that all the time. I was driving, not bicyclists, but a pedestrian was in the merge turn lane 
with a stroller. And I mean, that's so dangerous. And just watching that makes you cringe yeah. and asking for disaster. So yeah, the crosswalks are a huge thing to remember when people are walking yeah, or sure. riding the bikes. Yeah. For the drivers, but also the pedestrians yeah. and the cyclists, it's remembering to seek out that crosswalk. And sometimes it just takes them walking several hundred feet down to the nearest intersection that has a traffic light where they can wait for the traffic light to stop traffic for them, especially at nighttime if they're crossing the highway mm, and they can't see them. So certainly the best thing for pedestrians to use are crosswalks. And something we were thinking about even before the podcast is they built all these great sidewalks up and down 158. Are bikes allowed on that and should they use that? So bikes are authorized to be used on a sidewalk. Nags Head here, if you look at the beach road, we have the sidewalk that's on the east side of the road. Mm -hmm. We call that the multi-use path. So it's used for several methods of transportation for walkers and for bicyclists. And the thing with the sidewalks is we like to make sure that cyclists use caution whenever they're on that sidewalk or that multi-use path because a lot of the driveways on the beach road mm. um, on that east side of the highway where the multi-use path is are obstructed by bushes right. so when That's you a have a point. you have a car backing out they're mm. not looking for a bicyclist so again cyclists are allowed to be driven on that sidewalk but they also can use the highway yeah, I see that quite often on beach road that bicyclists are actually not on the multi-use path. So they're actually in the right for doing that? It's, yes. That's legal? Correct. Yeah. Oh, if, if, so if a, a bicyclist wants to use the sidewalk, they can. There's mm -hmm. nothing that prevents them from doing that. But mm -hmm. if they choose to drive on the highway, they just have to operate the bicycle as if they were a vehicle. <laughs> and so in areas where there are no sidewalks, and fortunately in Nags oh, right. Head, we have sidewalks, but there are places such mm -hmm. as Kitty Hawk on the beach road, they don't have very much sidewalk. And so for that, a uh, pedestrian needs to then walk facing traffic. So the pedestrians then can see oncoming traffic, especially at night. They can see traffic that's traveling and oncoming. So they're basically walking against traffic. Same thing with runners to walk as you're facing traffic. So that's usually the rule there for pedestrians. So that they jump out of the way quick if yeah. they have to. <laughs> no, that's a, it's, well, it's, so you don't see behind you, right? Right. So, yeah. And plus it allows them to see you right. on that side. But right. yeah, so if you're walking against traffic, obviously you want to walk as far away from the road as you can. So, and then just come back over once that car's passed. How about bridges? That was something ah, else. Like bridges. the causeway, the Nags Head Causeway. Can cyclists go on that? Do you know? You can. Well, again, they have to follow the same rules as if <laughs> right. they were vehicles. So right. the causeway on, on bridges, the thing with bridges is that bicyclists can occupy the entire lane. The they, law allows them to do that. Really? Yes. Wow. So if they need it. And there's huh. rules then for them to occupy that whole lane. If you're going to pass a bicyclist, you just got to make sure it's safe to do so. And you're in a area mm -hmm. where you can pass the bicyclist. But most of the time, most cyclists, you'll see them being as far to the right. Mm -hmm. Some avid bicyclists will usually stay inside that white fog line, and some mm -hmm. will just stay as close away from the highway as they can. So. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine riding my bike on the right memorial bridge. Yeah. Wow. I know, but you see folks you do see it. it all the time. Yeah. 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 Okay, so if you are involved in an accident with your bike or as you're walking, what are some things that they should be aware of? Yeah, so whenever you're involved in a crash, uh, any type of vehicle collision, the state law requires that you stop and you provide information to the other party, your operator information, vehicle and insurance information. If there aren't any injuries and you have a traffic crash that's very minor, fender bender that's on the street or the beach road or the highway, try to move the vehicles if they can be moved to the nearest parking lot. If there is injury, obviously leave the vehicles where they're at because that's usually what's needed to reconstruct mm -hmm. a crash. Call 911, certainly. And then remain at the scene until EMS and first responders and law enforcement arrive. I know if you're a witness to a crash, and that means if you've seen the crash, mm -hmm. witness the crash occurring, we get a lot of times in my experience where witnesses like, yeah, I was over in the nearby restaurant and I heard it. I'm a witness. Uh, okay, that may help in telling me what time the crash happened, but you didn't see it. So, right. But certainly if you witness a crash, witnesses can stay because the witnesses corroborate 
statements from drivers mm-hmm. and not everyone tells us the truth so uh <laughs> yeah certainly if you're involved in any crash uh, state law requires that you stay on scene and provide that information and it never hurts i would tell every vehicle crash that i was dispatched to i'd always tell them it it doesn't hurt for us to do that investigation because when it comes to insurance Uh, that insurance company may need more information. And if you report it, then that's a lot better than you just taking the word of someone else giving you their information on a napkin. (laughs) (laughs) But let's go over the turn lane. Okay, let's do that. that. I would love to do that. Let's do that. All right, so so the turn lane, I know a lot lot of us refer to as a turn lane or the merge lane. Mm -hmm. So it's in the middle of the bypass, US 158, at least here in the Outer Banks, Kitty Hawk, all the way down through Nags Head. So this is a turn lane. So the arrows in this lane turn left if you're driving in that direction. So if you get into that turn lane, turn uh, left. So, um, and they are, unfortunately for our highway, we have a lot of turn lane. And so what some drivers will do, they'll move their vehicle into the turn lane and then merge or blend into traffic going in the direction, which would be north or south. So obviously these are not merge lanes because they don't have arrows that merge you into the direction of traffic. So they're turn lanes. People do it all the time. We know that. The thing with the turn lane is if you're involved in a crash and you cause that crash by merging into traffic, then you can be found at fault. So that's the biggest thing with that. Oh, wow. Yeah. So So to clarify that, if you're coming out of some place and you're making a left onto the bypass, you have to make sure there's no traffic coming either way. Is that what you're saying? Correct. And just cross over that turn lane right into the wow. uh, left yeah. the direction you want to go in correct that's a turning lane not a merging lane so i'm not admitting i've ever done that <laughs> but um, i'm thinking 0.0001 percent of the people down here know that i know i agree because <laughs> most every- i didn't know that yes. either yes <laughs> Wow. Christian, it's the only way you can get across yeah. the highway. No, you're right. I, I will agree with that. I can't deny it because the last thing you want to do, if there's so much traffic in one direction, you right. sneak into that and then you're stopped there waiting to then Correct. your lane to clear up and then you can merge in. And what happens then is now you're in the middle turn lane uh-huh. and a car that's going in the opposite direction, say south, if you were going north, has to turn left. They yes. can't do it now. Right. So that's kind of the big thing with the merge lane and so moving forward to the pedestrian sometimes we see pedestrians that use the turn lane yes. as like an island for, for them <laughs> to walk it's it's funny we no laugh, it's not but, funny but, i'm but, not laughing yeah so they use that center turn lane because now they've made it through two lanes okay now i'm at a, <laughs> at a break and a halfway point of the highway so then after that then they wait for the next two lanes to free up and then they can run across. So they're not to be used by pedestrians. I would never want to stand Mm -hmm. in the turn lane. Absolutely not. And bicyclists too. We see a lot of sometimes of bicyclists that will use that center turn lane. Again, if they're not turning, then they're just using it Mm -hmm. for a third lane. But yeah, certainly a lot of people do it. It's uh, very hard to enforce Mm -hmm. because so many do it, but it is something that drivers should be aware of. I think that's what makes our roads unique. I don't know. I mean, just having this turn lane everywhere. Yeah. So uh, a couple other things. Bicyclists at night are required to have a white light on the front of their bicycles. That white light should be up to 300 feet. And on the back, they should have a reflector. So that's required. It certainly doesn't hurt to put more lights on. Uh, Plus to wear light colored clothing, wear some reflector vests or reflector clothing. Let's talk about a little bit of pedestrians that are in crosswalks. You know, Mm -hmm. vehicles required by state law to stop for pedestrians that are within the Mm -hmm. crosswalk. Mm -hmm. And then we also tell pedestrians that if you're going to cross at a crosswalk, make sure your intent to cross is known by other vehicles or by the drivers of those vehicles. The rule of thumb for that is if you put one foot on the pavement, (laughs) uh, as soon as that one foot is on the pavement, then you're now within the crosswalk. Mm -hmm. So if you're a pedestrian and you unfortunately get struck by a vehicle while you're in a crosswalk, then certainly that the driver's at fault. But if you're a pedestrian that's crossing in an area where there's no crosswalk or where you're not supposed to cross, Uh such as most of the areas uh, on the bypass that aren't 
marked crosswalks Mm -hmm. or at intersections, you can be found at fault. The driver that struck you wouldn't be found at fault because you were in the highway. So certainly make sure you go to sidewalks if you are a pedestrian and drivers that see pedestrians at or beginning to cross, make sure they stop. And then that's interesting about intent. If you put your foot, yeah, that was the rule. We did some training a few years ago, um, and watch for me and see, which is where most of our pedestrian and bicycle safety training comes from. They tell us, you know, there's a lot of pedestrian training to make sure that pedestrian crosswalk rules. Is it a solid line? Is it a, a straight white lines? You know, is it opening on one sidewalk that goes to an opening? So there's a lot of rules. And watchformenc.org is a great website to go to to get some more information about pedestrian and vehicle driver safety as well as bicyclists. That was watchforme.org? Watchformenc.org. Watchformenc.org. Yep. I'm pretty much to the end of what important things that you guys wanted me to talk about, Uh but certainly don't drink and drive. And Uh, I just want to say, you said that bicyclists have to follow the same rules. Yes. And so you can't drink and ride your bike. That's correct. Even if you have a drink holder on your bike. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Alcoholic drink. An alcoholic (laughs) beverage. Yes. So yeah, you can get charged and arrested for a DWI on a bicycle driving while impaired. But just make sure that if you're driving, we've got so many ride sharing applications right now. Get a ride from someone. Uh, there are still cabs that work on the Outer Banks, se- <laughs> several of them that run through Nags Head. So make sure you also don't do drugs and drive through because impaired driving is just the same as drunk driving. So there's a lot of officers that are in the Outer Banks, troopers and deputies, law enforcement that are trained to identify drug and alcohol impaired drivers. So. Make sure you call for a ride and uh, don't. It's cheaper. Yeah. And several of the cab companies have a bike rack. So That's if right. you need to put your bike on it, if you've drank too much and can't do your bicycle, they yeah. can accommodate That's you. Right. That's exactly Excellent. right. Excellent. Well, thank Great you. Great information, Christian. Yeah. Thank no you. No problem. Now I'm going to be all paranoid riding in the center lane when I go home today. <laughs> why, why Am I doing this right? Am I doing this right? You're not supposed to ride in the center lane. <laughs> no, I, no, I mean when I like. Make merge. a turn. Make a yeah, turn. Yeah. yeah. We well, if you're making a turn, you're good to go, but as long as you're not merging. Into- <laughs> One yeah. other little thing I just want to mention if you're going to make that turn, get into that lane. Yeah. Yes. Please don't stay in the right lane or left, the lane. left lane. The left lane. Yeah. With your blinker on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, this podcast has been brought to you as a public service by the Outer Banks Hospital and Medical Group. If you've enjoyed this podcast, share it on your social channels. To hear more Outer Banks help, check out the library at theobh.com slash podcast. This is your host, Denise Schnabel. Stay safe.